Hello again, everybody. I just wanted to get on and answer some questions about uh, containers. So the thing that I like to use a container for, I'll show you after I make this a container. Um, so we'll just select the objects we want to have contain other things and go over to the properties browser here. And there's just tons and tons of properties that an object can have. We'll shrink everything down except for container so you see where I'm working. Um, so the first thing it could contain is anything. So anything that goes in there, um, it, it's it's in there. Unless it's not. You'll notice it's really particular about uh, the object being entirely in the container. So And it won't consider that to have been put in there until I move it a little, and now it's in there. Okay, So that means you have to get your, your object entirely in there. Um, and that means that your object needs to be small enough to fit inside the container. So what I like to use it for is um, if, a, if students have homework questions, which they often do, um, I'll have them write it in a box that's up on the screen, and maybe they had a question about 44, and so now that's in there. And the nice thing about it being in there is just a simple right-click on the box. I don't have to drag a big box around everything. Just one click on the container. Um, I'll copy, and then if I go to a, a new slide, which I'm going to move this in here, um, if I paste, it pastes everything that was in the container. So now I can take this with other homework questions, I can make it small, put it up there, I can copy it now that it's smaller, and as I move through the next slide and the next slide and keep pasting it on the next uh, new slide, it'll be this little thing up in the corner with all the writing. Uh, I find it really useful. So we'll go back here. I'll go ahead and uh, erase all that stuff. Um, so say I want the happy face to be contained, and then when the sad face is put in there, I want it to jump back out. I think that's what a lot of people want containers to do. So now we want the container to not just contain any old thing, but something specific. And the th specific thing we want it to contain is the happy face. So. Um, the deliriously happy face. So that's uh, what we're going to do. Um, so now it's set up. It's going to contain only this and not this. right? That's contained. Uh, the thing is, when I put this in there, you think, well, that's contained too. But it's not. It's not part of this container. Um, but that's not obvious to a student that that's not correct, right? that that isn't where that's supposed to go. Uh, so to get it to jump back out, you would think that you would tell the container to to push that thing out of there to reject it but it's actually this thing that you tell to go back to where it came from if it's not contained by a container so that's kind of a weird thing um, so in order to do that we go in here and it's a container type of property and if it's not contained by something if it's not contained we want it to return tell that to be true. Okay, So now it's all set up. If it tries to go in here, remember the container is not going to contain it, and so it's going to be rejected. Okay. Um, last thing, not only can you do specific objects, but you can do uh, classes of objects based on a keyword. So we can do keywords, and now we want to tell it the, the keyword. Um, I'll just remove this. I've done this before. Um, so I'll add a keyword. We'll have it contain faces. Right, so we'll just put the keyword as face. Okay. Um, so now, uh, when it contains a face, it will accept it, and when it's not a face that's being put in there, uh, it won't contain that thing. So how do we tell the container that something's a face? It's not that smart. It doesn't, you know, recognize this is a face just by the way it looks. So the way you tell it is select all the things that you want to be identified as faces. So I'll click on this, I'll hold down control, and I'll click on this. That's a way to select just with uh, with single clicks to collect uh, select several things at once, uh, as opposed to a big drag, uh, you know, box around everything. Um, so now we want both of these to be identified as faces. So we go up to identification, I click on keywords, we want to add a keyword. Now we're saying to the Promethean software, this is a face. Okay, this is a face and this is a face. 
Um, it's nice that it lets you select several things and change individual properties um, uh, about all of them. They don't have to be grouped together in one big block. Um, so these are faces, and that's great. And if, you know, these are not faces because we haven't said that they're faces. So we'll just go ahead and, and say, well, we'll have those be returned if they're not contained so that we know that those aren't faces, right? So um, now I go to put a face in there. It's good. I go to put this. Now it's a face, and that was, is within the rules of the container. But these are not going to go in there because they're, we haven't identified them as faces. Um, so just uh, the, the pretty basics of containers. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks a lot.